Okay, so why did I do this? Why did I make a montage of me taking out the books that I'm going to show you in this video? Completely annihilating any suspense that you would have had on my top 10 graphic novels. This is my very first top 10 video that I'm making for this channel in the 8 years that I've been on YouTube and I fucked it up. Seriously, I totally fucked it up. You have no reason left to watch this video. I can't believe that I've been on YouTube for over 8 years and I've never made a top 10 list. It has come to my attention that by reading all of these books, apparently you've come to the conclusion that I have some sort of opinion on them. And I value some of them over others. You're completely correct. But I haven't dared share any of this before. But okay, I'll show you my top 10 graphic novels. We are going to start off with something that is obvious. And that is a Batman book. The first book that I feel is one of the greatest Batman stories that I've read is this. Batman Black Mirror by Scott Snyder and Jock and also Francesco Francavilla. Uh, this is a crime uh, detective story with not Bruce Wayne but Dick Grayson holding the mantle of the bat. And I didn't know that going into this. This was something that I jumped in blindly. I just thought the cover looked cool. That is the main reason why I actually bought this. Uh, jumping into this, uh, this was scary as hell. <laughs> because the main villain within this story, which is James Gordon Jr., which is introduced within uh, uh, Frank Miller's Batman Year One, he is grown up in this story arc, and he is a psychotic killer. And that is the terrifying part, because that is not a supervillain in any matter. That could be a real person. Anyway, and that is more frightening than, than anything. The, the safety net that is superhero shows and comic books is that it is imaginary, it is fake, this cannot happen. But a psychotic killer is in the real world also. So that's what makes this story very grounded. Of course there are other things that happens within this book that is a little bit on the edge of what actually could happen, but it is still going into the psychology of James Gordon Jr. and him meeting up with his father after being gone for some time, uh, him remembering and reminiscing on a childhood memory with Barbara and one of her childhood friends. And all the way to the end of the book, this is overall Scott Snyder's best uh, work ever on Batman. And I say that including his Court of Owls and Death of the Family. I think this is his greatest work before anything else. And I am gonna keep on with the Batman stuff just because now I'm warmed up. And now I'm gonna talk about a much more classic story arc of Batman. And that is none other than the Batman The Dark Knight Returns. I'm showing you this side before because on this side there's Superman with a title, I mean what's up with that? And yeah, this collector's edition keeps uh, the four main issues within one hardcover each for the story arc. So here we have issue number four, which is the main conclusion bat battle between Batman and Superman, which later on was uh, inspiring for the Batman v Superman movie of course. And yeah, you can take that or leave it at, as you want, but this is pure art. Actually, the first time when I read this, I did not like it. I actually hated it. 
and I think I wrote a blog post even I don't have a blog anymore but I was frustrated but that was because this was one of the earliest Batman stories that I read and I don't think this should be one of those stories that you read first to appreciate truly appreciate the Dark Knight Returns I think you should read some modern Batman or some detective runs or maybe something from at least the 80s or 90s uh, I did not like it the first time believe me or not but after having seen the animated movie of it you got a better tone for it in your head on how the dialogue would move on then of course there's all the documentaries that I watched about this that also influenced my liking for it and yeah now I think it's one of the greatest Batman stories ever actually and I, I, I love the inner monologuing on him finding the perfect death and everything and there was a, a podcast episode with uh, Kevin Smith and Grant Morrison and Grant Morrison talking about Dark Knight Returns and everything and how he evolves from issue to issue. I mean, each and every issue, Batman has a new suit, basically. So he evolves yet again. Of course, there were other aspects of it, but uh, and there's always one scene within this uh, where Karen Kelly uh, Robin almost falls to her death and uh, Bruce catches her right before with his mantle or cape and uh, he says good good soldier good soldier that always gets me somehow I don't know just because she is uh, just like that uh, she almost died and I don't know Maybe after the death of Robin, truly appreciates uh, the sacrifice that this young girl's actually doing for Bruce now when he's returned. And then of course the Dark Knight Returns also holds the Joker within the story, and what Frank Miller does with that character within this one, I think, is great. That's a creepy Joker. The mentality that the Joker loves Batman, which Scott Snyder puts uh, more effort into, I would say, in, within the death of the family, or the death of the family. Already, Frank Miller was there, 30-something years before that. He was already there and uh, poking on that level with uh, Batman and Joker being within the tunnel of love, within this uh, carnival that is in this issue and yeah that, that's just another aspect that i love with this story and yeah i should go on with next book so i mentioned grant morrison a bit there so i was thinking i can go to this one and show you we three this is a paperback which is not common within my collection i try to have only hardcovers as they're more durable within time i guess but this one, this story, I just had to have it. And it is only three issues thick. So this is the quickest read you'll ever have. Also one of the saddest. And that, that is why I like this so much because this really grips me when I read about this uh, little bunny, the cat and the dog. And I'm not usually an animal person per se. Of course, I have my own cat within my life. But reading the inner dialogue and how they communicate with each other, trying to escape all of these experiments that is being placed on them. And we three, they, they're basically assassins. They're, they're built to be assassins. And yeah, you get to follow them through missions and then people get involved, of course, always people. And the ending, <laughs> so strong. I guess I like this so much just because it actually, it, it strikes a chord with me. 
So now with we free out of the way, I'm still gonna keep on with emotional books that has affected me. And actually made me cry man tears. Big, big man tears. And this is Day Tripper by Fabio Moon and uh, Gabriel Ba. This uh, takes up a subject that is not often talked about, and that is death. And not only that, but it also goes through legacy and what we leave after and so on and so forth. But death actually as a subject is pretty taboo. I mean, reading superheroes storylines over and over again, people die, but they come back and therefore not real. This one has a unique concept within it in which this is no spoiler, this is how it actually works within the, in the book, is that it, it, we follow this one main character through his life, but within each issue we see something go wrong and actually goes to the fate that he dies within each and every issue. But then the next issue moves on forward as if what if that accident or something something had not happened and then moves on the storyline. It proves that life could end at any time and so on and so forth. But of course there are layers upon layers also upon that within this book. This hit the feels pretty, pretty strong within the last issue. And that is why it has placed on my top 10 list. Next book I'm going to show you is a Alan Moore book. And of course, you've also seen the book in the intro and everything, but still, as you maybe have seen, Watchmen was not on my top 10. I don't really know if Watchmen is on everybody's top 10 or what, but if you're talking Alan Moore, that is probably his greatest work. Completely agree. It probably is. But when it comes to something that actually strikes a chord with me, when it comes to sending a message out there, I believe that V for Vendetta is a much stronger message. Of course, Watchmen has a message of do not trust these heroes. These heroes have a problem just as we. But since heroes doesn't really exist, I go with V for Vendetta. Of course, V, the character, is maybe not human, or there is something different about him, but that's not really the point. The point is that V could be anybody. There's, of course, the movie with Hugo Weaving and um, Natalie Portman, uh, that sends the exact same message and uh, whichever betrayal you prefer go watch it read this and uh, yeah that is why I like this book so much just because the, the message of uh, uh, for example how the government should uh, should fear its people the people shouldn't fear their government or maybe the first sentence of a way around but yeah you know what I mean uh, that that is so true because the government should be a servant for the people and not the other way around I believe and yeah that is why V4 uh, Mendetta is on my top 10 list I'm gonna dive into DC now again and this is the event that I think I've reread read most times out of all of them that is Simply Infinite Crisis. I think I've read this five, six times maybe within different formats because I've had the standard sized hardcover at one point, the trade paperback, the absolute edition, first printing of the omnibus, and now second printing of the omnibus. And I'm pretty sure that I reread one of those at some point, so five or six times in my life, I've read Infinite Crisis. 
But of course, the times when I read it in the omnibus format is when I really, really got a huge payout for pretty much all the characters that was involved within this one. Especially for, uh, of course, the main trinity. That is Batman, Wonder Woman and Superman. If you haven't read this, it's sort of a sequel for the first Crisis on Infinite Earths, where in the end of it, uh, Lois Lane, Golden Age Lois Lane, uh, Golden Age Superman, Earth 3, Lex Luthor, which is a good guy, and Earth Prime Superboy gets relocated into this somewhere outside of time and space gets locked in there and gets to be observer of what is happening within the main DC universe now when it is all on one Earth. But then of course there were else worlds and such and such. But now they have observed on how characters have become darker and everything. We have the Hal Jordan uh, turning into parallax and everything, the identity crisis and what happened to Sue Dibney and what they did to their team members and everything and other story arcs they just pretty much felt that we need to have a good classic superheroes back into this world and so on and so forth this is a job for superman they return and try to set things right and having superman prime or Having our Earth-1 Superman meeting up with Superboy Prime and Golden Age Superman is one some of the best conversations between characters that I've seen because it is so meta and uh, yeah, uh, what they do to Superboy, I, <laughs> I, I get shivers off my spine each and every time I read this and what, what is happening to him. Uh, this, Truly the greatest uh, event in DC. Now the only event that I can think of that can top that DC event is this one Marvel event, which is pretty recent, but it is my Bible when it comes to Spider-Man, and that is Spider-Verse. And of course the page layout within this book is a mess because the crossovers between each and every issue when they were publishing two or actually three, four titles at the same time, which all intertwined with each other to the greater end, is not collected in the best way within this book. But taking that aside, this is the greatest Spider Man event out there. And I would like to say one of the greatest Marvel events out there. You will never get a bigger Spider-Man event ever again. Because I read Spider-Geddon. It was not good. At all. There's a reason why I stopped reading Spider-Man after Dan Slott. Because I tried to uh, pick up the Nick Spencer issues and I kept on within two years of him having the title, but never, never even came close to this. And from what I'm hearing, it's never gonna. So, Spider-Verse, it pretty much says itself what it is about. Different characters and iterations of Spider-Man. This is such a nostalgia trip. For any fan, whenever you came into Spider-Man, you will find your Spider-Man within this book. Whether if it was from one of the animated TV series or one of the games, even a Japanese series. It also features one of the greatest villains, that is Morlan. Morlan? <laughs> Can I pronounce that? Maybe. But he was introduced in the JMS the story arc, the J. Mike Straczynski Spider-Man and they blossom him up to an even greater villain and introduces the whole family of Morlan and uh, yeah 
great story. That's why it's on top 10, so on and so forth. And we have three more books to go. We have Vision by Tom King. And reading this the first time, blown away. And <laughs> yeah, uh, what I really like about this, the Vision, if you haven't heard about it, it is, um, of course, Vision. Uh, I've only been exposed to the character within the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but of course I kind of knew he was there in one iteration of the Avengers team or another, but this is the very first time that I actually read something with him in it, unless you count Rage of Ultron, I just remembered, which is also a very good book, but not a top 10 book. He creates his own android family and they move into the suburbs and just try to have a normal life and I guess what I like about this is the aspect of trying to fit in uh, within the society and everything and uh, what they do with that having people coming over first being very nice and then as soon as they actually show how they are and everything people turn on them of, of course what i really like this about this is of course the humanizing aspect on the androids and that actually make the androids more more people than the actual people that they meet up within this book and tom king he he struck a chord with me, used that twice now, but uh, when it comes to the next book that I'm going to show you, I was a bit hesitant on picking it up because I never thought anything by Tom King ever again could reach up to this. Then I picked up this, it's the miracle. I was hesitant about picking this up, as I said, because I didn't think that anything could live up to his vision run. And Mr. Miracle is something, he was introduced to me, of course, within uh, the Dark Side War Saga by Jeff Johns and Jason Fabok. And he was a cool character there. Maybe he wasn't too important to the plot. Of course, he was important, but he didn't have too many moments to shine in. But of course, here he is the main protagonist. And you almost walk through half a life, it feels like, with the character, but also how you can interpret this story in one or two many ways. Just, it, this is another one of those humanizing things. I mean, Scott Free is human, and or he's not actually human. He's from uh, uh, New Genesis, is it called that? It's Apocalypse and New Genesis, I believe. And also Big Barda, uh, which is his wife. And they just, just like the Vision, they live in the suburbs and just try to make a life for themselves. And we get to see them make a life for them. And I, I don't know, the stories are humanizing, as I said. And these are aliens. And so it's really fun to see how he does that. And yeah, that's why it's there. Top 10. Okay, this is the final book. And some people are gonna think that I'm crazy to put this on my top 10 list. And of course, if you paid attention in the intro, you might know what I'm about to show you. It is absolute. Batman Hush. Why this is on my top 10 list is basically because this is what pulled me into reading Batman all the time. This is also my very first exposure to Jim Lee's artwork and I've been a big fan ever since. I even bought this blue line a shadow action figure of Batman with a pr uh, 
print sketch by Jim Lee just because I just love his artwork and i never even taken this out of a box or something like that. I just wanted this print basically. And I'm trying to be a minimalist and just have the essentials, but this is sparks joy. And when I use this sign, I don't even actually know what I'm doing. I'm such a big Jim Lee fan now that I'm actually trying to follow him on his YouTube channel while he draws different characters and try to make my best effort to draw something like him. Much like this. And that is how this one book has affected me and in a creational way and collective way. But also this was a great introduction into the Batman universe as it was during this time. Because basically you go through half of his rogues gallery within just this book and I think the story is solid. So the Batman Hush book absolutely has a more nostalgic value for me, not sure more than the story, but I think it is a great introduction actually into Batman and uh, it was one of my first exposures to Batman and Look what happened. And yeah, that was my final book for my top 10 craft novels. So I would like to thank you all so much for watching this. I will make sure to make another post in the community bar where you get to vote on which top 10 list to watch next and which one I should dive into. It's probably gonna be something about Marvel or independent books or maybe favorite Batman run or favorite Spider-Man run Those are the ones I come up with if you have a suggestion of a top 10 list or other video that we, you would like to see me make Go for it. So thanks so much for watching this video Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet So you won't miss out on the next video that I am sure to give 100% once again and till then i'll see you all in the next video bye bye